Welcome, welcome, ladies and gentlemen, and everyone in between. You know how we do. Grab your vices. Get ready to chill out, and let's get straight to it. This is episode 14 of Straight Forward with Miss B, alongside my guest co-host, A.G. What's up, A.G.? What's happening? What's happening? Tell me something. Man, you ready for Easter this weekend? Oh, no, but I got I got some for him, though. <laughs> oh, my God. What you got for him? I got some Easter. I got us some eggs. Okay, for the kiddos, grandkids mm-hmm. and stuff. Yeah. Oh, do y'all do stuff at home? Like hide the eggs at home or you do it like at church or a park? Yeah, park. A park, okay. Yeah, a park. Oh, okay. Yeah, I just came from the dentist today and they kept asking me, what you got planned for the weekend? I'm like. What's going on? What happened this weekend? Right. <laughs> Yeah, I almost forgot it was Easter. <laughs> I'm like, what's going on? I'm like, shoot, I don't have no kids. I don't know. I can't keep up with the shit with the holidays now. Mm-hmm. I ain't got no little kids to hide no eggs. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, though. But outside of that, um, let's see, weekend. Let me see if anything crazy happened over the weekend. Not that I could think of. Nothing nothing too major happened this weekend. Um Yeah, nothing out the ordinary, just normal, normal stuff, running errands, grocery store, got my nails feet done this weekend. I try to do that every two weeks. You took granny with you? No, I didn't take granny with me this time. I didn't have her. My mom had her over the weekend. But usually her either if me and her don't go to the nail shop, then, you know, my mom takes her, get her nails done. Okay. Yeah, we make sure well, she keep herself cute, you know? Yeah, well, you was, yeah, I was still in NY, you know, still balling. Oh, you came back yeah. when, Saturday? Sunday. Sunday. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Just in time, huh, before the... Uh... Yeah, we passed through that station, too. The shooting. Yeah, we passed through that station on our way up to um up to Brooklyn, up through Brooklyn. Yep. Oh wow. Well, I guess we can start off with that topic because it was on our list for today. Um, talking about Frank James, the sixty-plus-year-old Frank James. Um, that's Jesse. That's Jesse Cousin. <laughs> you know. <laughs> He, he might have had some flashbacks <laughs> looking at them old Western movies or something, but I don't know. I don't know. But anyway, um, I guess before we can get into it, let me let you finish up your trip. Oh, yeah. It was wonderful celebrating 16 years with my wife. Oh. Uh, we ended up going to the um, opening day New York Yankee game. Okay, how was that? It was a great experience, you know. It was a great experience. It was a full house, too. Yeah, I'm sure it was. You know, baseball is a big thing. You know, opening day, that's, that was the thing, though. Yeah. Opening yeah. days, first pitch of the year, mm-hmm. first home run of the year, first everything, you know. Mm. I wonder how much those tickets be costing. Like not um, like you know like front row seats. Um, we had seats straight down the first baseline. We paid about about a hundred fifty a piece for them. Oh okay, yeah. Me and um he was talking about maybe trying to get some tickets to you know Hawks. Um, what is it? Playoff game. Yeah, we was looking at tickets last night online. <laughs> Uh, well, you better go on go to the first round. Cause he was last like, year we went to the Eastern Conference Finals and had to pay almost five hundred. Oh, that ain't that ain't that's good compared to the prices we saw last night. <laughs> oh, well, yeah, I was trying to sit on the floor. Cause he, you know, he had called me because he was like, man, you see Jay, he called me, you see Jay Z at the game, the house game. 
I wonder how much do front front row seats. I was like, oh, nigga, geez. we can't get no front row seat. <laughs> Got a damn price on it. Like he gonna, he gonna do it unless you finish stay on it for the rest of the month. Right, exactly. <laughs> I'm like, dude, he didn't know how much they cost. I said, do you know how yeah. much those tickets cost? I said they can run anywhere. Uh, I seen online it can go as far as like fifty thousand, depending on you know. Yeah, the right seat. The right see who they playing, right, you know, if it's yeah. the playoffs, the fi- NBA finals or whatever. I'm like, those seats cost a lot of money. Oh, yeah. You just need to be in the building, man. You ain't got to worry about – you ain't necessarily got to worry about where you at, my man. It's all good seats right now. Right. I think the game they got let next week, I think the cheapest ticket that I saw, and it was like section – like. 119 and that's kind of like right behind you know where the people on the floor sit or whatever that was like the cheapest ticket in that section was like 450 yeah oh yeah that's that lower bowl yeah mm-hmm. that lower. Mm-hmm. well i told you we paid well that's the first round of playoffs so mm-hmm. but we said in the lower bowl though we paid almost 500 Okay. That ain't bad. I told him I'd pay that. Just to, you know, say I went. Hello? I mean, I don't, I don't go to basketball. I'm, I'm more of a football girl than basketball, but, you know, just to say I go and had a good time and was and, and was close oh, close gonna, to the flow, I can say. <laughs> it's going to be crunk now. That's one thing I can say about them guys. They be crunk. Yeah, I know they be crunk. I think my mom going to some basketball game next week. I don't know if it was for the Hawks or what. She didn't even tell me. They be they be everywhere. Her and my dad, they be more places than me. <laughs> <laughs> they be kicking it, honey. But um, so anyway, so speaking of New York, we were talking about Frank James. Um, for those of you who haven't heard, I'm sure you should have heard by now a black man um was a person of interest in a in the brooklyn subway mass shooting which injured i believe about maybe 18 people they said um last time i checked um <clears throat> apparently the guy you know was was witnessed to have thrown you know a smoke bomb um he entered the train he had on a gas mask i believe they said and he threw a smoke bomb and then after you know, the bomb went off or whatever. Um, then there was some shootings. Luckily, no one has passed away from that. But like I said, there was about 18 people that was injured. So apparently, you know, they did end up catching them within 24 hours. They was able to catch them. And what's so funny about that is because they said he turned himself, he turned himself in. He called a crime stoppers hotline. <laughs> Ain't that some crazy shit? <laughs> y'all motherfuckers ain't call me yet. Let me go and tell y'all what I'm Right, right. He, I think he had a little bit of uh, narcissism inside of him because apparently, you know, people online start trying to investigate, do their own investigations, and found out he have a YouTube channel. Um, he would make, like, extremist-type posts on Facebook um, you know, people kind of consider him as being what they call a black nationalist, like someone who um, have extreme view viewpoints on racial issues, political issues. Um, and basically, you know, he didn't necessarily like white people um, based on, you know, things that he would post online and um, and that he urged black people to wake up. You know, they always say to uh, have the same stay woke. Um, that is what he also liked to preach in his um, YouTube videos is for, you know, black people to, to wake up to what's going on. So apparently something, you know, something got into him. Well, like I said, uh, usually we're in that lower Brooklyn section where he did that at. Mm-hmm. That's like basically where a lot of rich people stay at. So it might right. not have been, it might have been a, police might have been sitting up in the, um, 
they got a booth right outside. You right outside where you go in. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, they probably didn't have nothing but that one police. But if you go like to where um downtown Manhattan, they got police is actually down in the subway. Like you might have the one that sit up in the uh, in the office, then you mm-hmm. might have had two that's out there where the train at. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? He probably had scoped it out and waited till the police left him down. I probably didn't do that shit. Right. Yeah, I mean, they they definitely, I looked at the press conference that they had, um, and, you know, the people from the city, you know, the mayor, the police department chief or whatnot, um, they said that they, of course, at this point, you know, being reactive instead of proactive, that they need to, you know, have a sit down and assess, you know, how this could happen and why security cameras weren't working in certain areas, you know, of the subway station. So, yeah, they they were definitely lacking, you know, as far as, like, having it secured, you know, for passengers. Right, it should be a police station at each, at least two police at every stop, you know. I know it's a lot right. of stops, but, you know, that shit. Right, or at least make sure they have camera. those cameras working. All man, right, every camera in New York work, man. You better believe that shit, cause I watch the news every morning. <laughs> Everybody mm-hmm. that do a crime outside of New York on on tape. Yeah, you talking about the cameras on the street, but apparently they they getting their ass. The people who own the the metro rail system, the subway in New York, oh they the city is on their ass for them cameras not working. Oh, okay. Cause mm-hmm. I, ain't know, I thought all of them up because I know if you outside on that street, cause everybody that shot somebody or kidnapped or robbed, nigga, they had <laughs> they were showing the video. <laughs> oh yeah, they them street light. I mean, street cameras definitely be working. They gonna get you. I was thinking too. Maybe they need to implement um some metal detectors like you know when you enter the subway and you have to pay your money to go through the little stall thing they Ooh. maybe they need to put metal detectors down there Ooh, that's gonna be a lot of money well i mean shit we we you know the the world and definitely the united states does not want another world trade center situation happen you know so uh-huh. it's best to invest the money you know we went down there too. World Trade Center, seen that, seen the memorial. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they got like a waterfall with a hole in the middle, and they don't know where it where it ends. Oh, okay. They got mm-hmm. two of the same thing. But yeah, the, um, I didn't go there. That went down. Mm-hmm. Well, anyway, um, so, you know, to wrap up that segment, everybody, you know, sometimes as much as we take precautions and, you know, look at our surroundings and, you know, in some cases carry protection on ourselves, you just never know when something unexpected like this is going to happen. It's definitely you know, a tragic situation. However, you know, I'm glad that no one, you know, died because of this. Right. Um, but yeah, the man is his caught, which is good. You know, he's he doesn't. Um, they denied a bond for him. Um, so yeah, he he oh, he ain't, ain't no getting out of town. Letting him out. Yeah, they not letting him out for sure. It's a federal charge. Mm-mm. So um, moving from um, self-proclaimed prophets. And talking about the trade. <laughs> Do you know what the trade mean? Have you ever heard that term? Uh-uh, no. Okay. Enlighten me. Okay. Well, you know, so, you know, I have friends in the LGBTQIA um, community. And trade basically means a heterosexual male. Um, but then, you know, heterosexual males who may live a, a double life or, you know, some people use the other term down low, 
um, is considered trade or is called trade in the gay community. So, you know, this week we had a story that that just kind of hit the way it just kind of hit us out of from nowhere, you know. <laughs> it just hit us out of nowhere, man. That damn Benzino from Love and Hip Hop ATL. He was also the co-founder of um, the legendary um, Source magazine. Um, he was outed by um, transgender female. Um, she's an influencer. I think she may have been on a reality show. I'm not sure, but her name is Shauna Brooks. Um, yeah. Shit came out. She was playing audio footage of, you know, conversation that they had. Now, what I've learned is that there was a conversation with Benzino and what's the what's the dude from LA who always talking about everybody? He be in everybody business. Uh, you know what I'm talking about? Whack Whack one hundred. You ever heard of his name? Right okay. <laughs> So him and uh, so from what I understand, Benzino and WAC One Hundred they were they were on the Clubhouse app, and you know they was having this heated discussion or whatnot. And I believe at some point, some statements were made by Benzino. Um, Benzino just kind of not talking about the gay community or gays, but just kind of made a remark that rubbed Shauna, who's at this time, behind the scenes, no one knows that they may be possibly messing around. So she felt some kind of way. She felt as though, um, she felt as though, like, how can you seem so against or, you know, come off as being homophobic, um, but yet you're living this double life with me? <laughs> So she took it upon herself at that point to, you know, out him, out him to everybody. So everybody, you know, social media going crazy. You had 50 Cent. He started putting up his post, clowning him, talking about, you know, him. And then, you know, the rumors of Young Buck sleeping with trans women as well came out some years ago. Um, you know, he was talking about them on his post. And, um, yeah, 50 says that they need to come out of the closet and just live in their truth. So the question that, you know, I kind of have today, and I know AG is a heterosexual male. You know, he has a wife. He loves women and everything. But this is my podcast, and we can talk about whatever the fuck I want us to talk about, right? <laughs> So, <laughs> so if he don't really have no input, that's fine. But anyway, so the question I had was, should DL men be forced to come out? Meaning that, you know, should someone who they're dealing with that's in the gay community, you know, out them? Like, I don't think they should out them. Like, no, they should be forced to come out. Right. I feel like that's something, you know, that's your sexuality is, is something private, you know, something that you, you know, experience on your own time behind your closed doors um, with whomever your partner is. And you should never be a person should never be placed in a position to where um, they're kind of forced to kind of, you know, live in their truth. It shouldn't be. You know, no one else is God. No one is God, right? So you can't tell me when I need to do something or you can't, you know, just put my business out there or whatever. Allow, allow me, you know, the person to, to experience life on their own, evolve on their own, you know, do things at their own timing. Right. Well, you know. You never know when somebody gonna do you in though on that. <laughs> well, know. yeah, you right. Yeah, turn you in. <laughs> right, especially being a celebrity. <laughs> yeah, like he, hey, like she would have never said that if he would have got on the little podcast talking about it. You know what I'm Right. We ain't talking about that today. <laughs> right. <laughs> I guess she I mean, just felt triggered when he, you know, said what he said. She just said, mm -hmm. you know, shoot, bump this. I'm finna put it all out on the table. But if you 
if you think about it, you know, forcing somebody to come out of the closet, that's like that's kind of like a form of bullying. And if it is a form of bullying or can be considered that way, should there be legal ramifications for outing somebody? You know, they do have, you know, ramifications uh, when it comes to, like, people who leak sex tapes, you know, or people who, you know, may leak your address, which is called, like, doxing, like, leaking people's addresses, posting it on social media or posting their phone numbers and stuff like that on social media. Um, that's called doxing. So there is legal, legal, um, you know, ramifications for that. So if you think of forcing somebody to come out, I would think they should, these people might need, need to start suing these people or some pressing some charges. <laughs> That's just like somebody starting a room on you or something, right? I mean, because if you say, if you, you got to have receipts when you do all that stuff, you know? I mean, you, you write about anybody that. Anybody can say something. Yeah, anybody can say something. But, I mean, I guess she, Shauna might, Shauna got the receipts. They played the video, the audio. That tape that ain't really it, it was something but I don't know I listened to it and um uh, and I listened to his excuse about it. <laughs> 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 he do did he sound like he lied? Like he tried to explain this way. <laughs> <laughs> he tried to explain the best way he can. He was like no, no, that is it's not what it seems. <laughs> I was on there talking about to her and we was involved. He said he would have said something sexual. He said, wouldn't I have said something sexual or something? Right. And you see how when she kept calling him daddy. Did you hear that one? Um, she kept calling him daddy. Yeah. Like, okay, daddy. Something like that she kept saying. <laughs> <laughs> That's like she shot up making it worse. Like <laughs> Yeah. Uh, the one I heard, she he kept on saying, It's okay. It was it was a crazy conversation anyway. That's the conversation was was questionable. I say, cause Yeah. He making this thing like He was like, um, I don't watch I don't watch tranny porn. Some other stuff he said. I don't he look at that type of stuff. He kept on saying it'll be all right for you, but if it was me, you know what I'm saying? It making it seem like he they talking. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. It was kind of yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's how I felt too. Listen to it. I was like, wait a minute. Maybe she done <laughs> asked him some question to where yeah. no matter what he says, it's gonna sound like you know what I'm saying. Sound like they probably got something going on. It's it's yeah. almost like he fell into it. You know what I mean? Somewhat yeah, the question like a setup almost. Like, like you like basically like coming out. Like me, I can't come out. I can't tell. You know, I'm gonna it's it's hard to explain what I think he was. Right. Basically like he can't he couldn't do it, but it'd be all right for us. Cause he's a celebrity. It's like they'll they'll run me through the mud if I do it. Right. Yeah, but you know, I don't put nothing past these dudes. I don't put nothing past them at all. You got oh, yeah. Young Buck. He done had allegations in the past, you know, be I mean, and with receipts showing him and them in the in the hotel rooms, getting it <laughs> on. You got Young Buck. Who's the other dude that got caught up one time? Bobby Valentino. The singer, oh, Bobby V, he got caught up. Yeah. You There's got a lot of people that got caught up with that with that dude because you you look like a real woman. Yeah, but I'm yeah. These were some. I mean, these other these the real ones. The these other the real yeah, ones, these the real. <laughs> they get caught up with the real ones, right? Yeah, oh, they get caught up. They ain't get caught up with no, you know. 
the ones that still look walking past here every day. Looking hard, <laughs> hard as ever. Yeah, he got caught with the real one. He got caught with the real one. <laughs> Don't please the people that's listening to this and <laughs> Please don't cancel my podcast before it get off the ground. Because, you know, like I said, I am an ally. The way I'm talking here is the same way I talk to my gay friends. We joke around and everything. And so I make sure that I'm saying the right terms, you know, using the right pronouns. So I don't want to offend anybody. Anybody. Yeah. But I don't trust none of y'all dudes. <laughs> I don't trust it's too, it is way too many dudes that be living these lives, and then they be ha- it just it's 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 a mess, man. It's and then a the mess. The question I be having about it though, these dudes that be wanting these other dudes, do they still want the dude once he turns into a woman? I mean, shoot, I I don't know. I mean, you might have situations where you may have situations where the trans woman is already the trans woman. You know what I mean? Like they've already evolved prior to even getting into that relationship or whatnot, you know, with their DL guy. You know what I'm saying? So they're already a woman. They probably got the the breasts and, you know, they take the hormones and all of that, but then you may have you may have situations where a guy may start off dating a DL dude, and it may be a little a gay boy, or you know, not boy like child, but you know, a gay man. And the gay man may eventually want to transition into a woman. They may feel as though you know they're in the wrong was body. A dude like that on Facebook. Who? That's why I said it was something. Some dude, I ran across his page. He was a, um, he was transitioning to be a trans. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. He was in transition, mm-hmm. but he had a dude that used to he used to talk to when he was a a regular boy just doing it. You oh, okay. Saying? He didn't want him to be a girl. Transition. Yeah, and once he started to be transitioning to a woman, mm-hmm. the dude didn't like him no more. Oh wow. Okay. So he was like, the dude didn't like him when he turned into a woman, but when he was a man, he used to love him. Right. You know what I'm saying? Well, that's, I mean, I think it that's just preference at the end of the day. You know, everybody don't, some some gay dudes want to just be with gay men. They want to be with gay, you know, just the male figure in its form. You know what I'm saying? They don't want a female feminine figure. Not all gays are the same. You have, you have gay men that are flamboyant. And that are that still present themselves or look as a man, you know what I'm saying per se. But then you may have gay dudes who are very uh, heterosexual and they're masculine. They're not feminine or flamboyant. You know what I'm saying. And then you may have gays like you just said that start off in the male form, but then you know at some point in their life decide, hey, I want to be a woman, kind of like Caitlyn Jenner who, you know, lived his life all these years as a man and then waited to his, what, 60s to yeah. transition to be a woman. So it just all depends, and then it just all depends on, you know, the person they're dating and their and their preference, you know. It's somebody out here for everybody, child. Yeah, man, yeah. <laughs> somebody out here for everybody but my thing is at the end of the day I think that everybody everybody should live in their truth am I saying living it out loud like I'm not saying you gotta be at every gay march or you know what I'm saying hold a flag up and all that type of stuff the rainbow flag i'm not saying you have to do that but i'm i I feel like people should live their true authentic selves i mean that's how you get a fulfilled life at the end of the day you want to before you leave this earth and perish i will hope that everybody get to the point where they can freely live as themselves 
and and be able to experience that 100%. You know, instead of, you know, having to leave this earth or, or getting gravely sick or whatever the case may be, and you've always just kind of, you know, been conservative or, you know, held your true self in and, and not really, you know, live life. You can't just worry about what other people think because they can't live your life. Only you can live your life. So might as well make the most of it. What you think? Hello? I'm here. You doing everything. You rolling around? No, I'm... <laughs> the phone was going in and out. <laughs> I said, do you have any last words? Um, what do you think people should do? Keep living in the closet? Mind their business. And let people live however they live. Because I don't like all this forcing stuff on people. I am against that. Okay, so you, you like Boosie. You feel I like Boosie me. feel. Yeah, I feel like I guess. I don't know how Boosie feel, but I just don't feel all that. Forcing this stuff on people, let you, if you if that's what you is, that's what you is. Don't try to make me have to, you know what I'm saying? And throw it all in my face. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't have no problem with you. As long as you ain't got no problem with me. Right. I ain't gonna bother you. You don't bother me. I know that's right. I know that's right. Let me see. What else we had on our list for the day? The news was kind of slow outside of this. Um, nothing really. I was gonna mention something about Ari Lennox having having her quarter quarterly rants. She always seen a vent on Twitter every three months about something. But you know, she said the trolls been calling her ugly for years. Um, but now she's kind of used to them calling her names. Ari, sister. She ugly, ugly. She, but she not <laughs> ugly. <laughs> That's the point. She it's, got low self-esteem it be I, apparently. All right, please. We gonna need you to grab some some more confidence. We need you to lift up that self esteem. You're definitely not ugly at all. You're a beautiful chocolate woman. You're very talented as well. You can't let them comments and them trolls. It, it ain't nothing but kids who be trolling these celebrities, and it just drive these celebrities crazy. Oh yeah, cause you know, they ain't talking about the Will Smith slapping what's his name no more. Only thing you gotta do is wait a week or two, and they ain't gonna be talking about you no more. Right, <laughs> right. I need just a couple of days, like you said, about a week. Yes, you'll yes, be old now. Them. Yeah, some <laughs> some else is, you know, they'll be trolling somebody else's account, you know, and yeah. driving them crazy. Yeah, yeah, these celebrities, man. I tell you the truth, it's a lot of pressure on them sometimes. Especially, like you said, if you don't have confidence and you got low self esteem, you have a hard, have a, have a hard time, have a hard time being a celebrity. Um, but anyway, so we thank you guys um you. for listening in to episode fourteen. As always, um, definitely, you know what to do. You got to follow us, you know, at straight for STR, the number eight FWD with Miss B on all streaming platforms. We're on social media, Instagram, Twitter, um, YouTube, Facebook, TikTok at STR, the number eight FWD MSB on all socials. And again, if you have any business inquiries, you can um, email us at straightforwardmedia at gmail.com. Do you have any um, goodbyes to say, AG? Hello, y'all. All right, till next time. Stay safe.